Warning! The following video contains material that might not be deemed suitable for children under the age of 18, children aged over the age of 18, or for persons suffering from squeamishness, diabetes, or political correctness. It's definitely not suitable for persons who think that spiritual talks should only be very, very sweet. In fact, some people might think that what I'm going to say isn't spiritual at all. Well, it better be a good talk after that kind of introduction. I'm going to be employing, as you might have noticed, satire, which has been used by spiritualists in the past to get a point across. What's it all about? What am I going to be talking about? I'm going to be talking about sex which sounds like six, but it's a lot more controversial. <clears throat> Undeniably, undeniably, it is, sex is, an overwhelming factor in human society, or as uh, Sigmund Freud pointed out, an underlying factor in pretty much everything we homo sapiens do and think about. That's according to Sigmund Freud. Do you believe him? Well, Srimad Bhagavatam, ancient Vedic scripture, says pretty much the same thing, although from a different perspective, but the Srimad Bhagavatam states that our whole consciousness is pervaded by and directed by this sexual attraction between man and woman. I'll explain that a little more a little later. The basic idea is the same, that everything we do has as an underlying principle the sexual attraction, and specifically between male and female. <clears throat> Scientists explain it, sec explain sexual attraction to be a, a natural bodily natural biological attraction instinct, which explains nothing. It's just a label to say that it's instinct. Sexual attraction has shaped whole civilizations going back in time, the ancient histories think Cleopatra, Helen of Troy, some women have become very famous, very rich, very popular, largely on the basis of their sexual attraction. There are so many names, I'll say just a few from the past, from the Western world, Greta Garbo, Marilyn Monroe, Sophia Loren, and among men uh, whose sexual attraction was a major part of their success, we can think of names like Sean Connery and Arnold, whatever his name is, Schwarzenegger or something like that. And apart from these big icons of uh, se sexual heroes or se sexual icons, stars. There are so many women who earn a living 
in a much more seedy way as prostitute sex workers, they're called nowadays. Uh, and the, the pornography business, uh, multi-billion dollar business, uh, don't, uh, don't switch channels now. Keep watching this one. It's better for your spiritual advancement to hear this than don't switch over to the porno channel. I know you're not going to do that. <clears throat> and we find that uh, pretty much everything is sold with advertisements showing beautiful women, just like car tires are sold, like the calendars, car tire, car, car tire calendars sold with pictures of beautiful women uh, largely undressed. Car tires, I don't think you could find anything intrinsically less sexy than a car tire, but somehow or other they get sold with pictures of beautiful women. So, what's it all about? Scientists, scientists, they study this sexual attraction in various fields such as biology, uh, psychology, uh, neurology, but a lot remains to be explained, which is good for the scientists in as much as scientists, uh, they're very expert at getting grant funds to uh, finance their research into various fields of knowledge. So I have a suggestion, just like mice are often experimented upon so that we can find out more about our human condition. We, we inject mice with different things and do all kinds of weird things to poor little mice for the benefit of the human race. Well, my suggestion here, just so that we can understand more about this sex, which is the driving force in human society, is don't experiment on mice. Why not try an experiment or series of experiments on gorillas because they're much closer to humans. I mean, biologically closer. Yeah, gorillas look a lot more like humans than mice do, and they're more like the same size, and they're primates, right? That's the word, primates, yeah. Whereas mice are rodents, and there must be a sub genus, which I don't know the name of. So here's my suggestion. We could have a, not me, you, Mr. Scientist, you could organize, not just any scientist, there are just so many different kinds of scientists. Uh, the, the gorillologists, what they could, gorillologists, you know, those people who for the uplift and advancement of the human race, they study gorillas. What they could do is they could organize a Miss World contest for gorillas. You know, just like they have this Miss World contest every year in which these poor girls, humans I'm talking about, they parade themselves and truth be told, what they're doing, they're trying to get money by using their bodily charms to attract men and in that way they're not different from prostitutes. It's the same motive. I'm not saying they're directly prostitutes, but it's the same motive that your physical condition, your, your, the physical shape you have is used for 
attracting men. So they come out. It's the same thing every year. Of course, I haven't watched it for many years, but I used to see it as a kid. The Miss the Miss World, Miss Universe, Miss UK, Miss this, Miss that. It's it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, different girls every time, but it's more or less the same shape of of legs and breasts and midriffs and. The smiles are pretty much the same. The hairstyle might be a bit different, but it's pretty much the same. Maybe the, the color of the skin, some are, some are white, some are brown, some are red, some are yellow. It's more or less the same thing every year. And you have these, these sophisticated gentlemen in suits and ties uh, l lusting over these gorgeous young women and but it's all very respectable right because it's i don't know why it's very respectable but it's it's the same propensity that the gorillas have so just like the uh we we find the the very nicely dressed gentlemen uh lustily drooling over the bodies of human beauties well, we can organize a contest. Why, why, why should we have all this pleasure looking at beautiful young women? Why not have the, the gorillas, the males, can also enjoy looking at the female gorillas? And uh, at the same time, we can advance science. So what we can do, we can have put some male gorillas behind some bars, because after all, they're not so civilized like human beings and you never know what they're going to do if they're not put behind bars and one by one you can parade some female gorillas and you, you train the female gorillas not you I mean the gorillologists they can train them to flash their eyes at the boys and smile very nicely and show their legs in an enticing way and just see how the male gorillas respond. For some of them, they may just make a little grunt. Mm, 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 mm. For others, they may get really excited and shake the bars and jump up and down. So you then you study very carefully the videos afterwards and see what is it about the Miss Gorilla the Miss Gorillas, that really excites the male gorillas. What is it that's sexy about them? Is it the hairy legs or the beautiful smiles or the grunts that the female gorilla makes? You can study it very carefully. In this way, we can get more insights into the sex attraction. And in this, we can apply to human beings and this will be for the great advancement of human society. And the winner of the Miss Gorilla 2020 contest can be given a bunch of bananas and the biggest, most hairy he gorilla behind the, the bars. Sorry about that. Getting a little excited here at the thought of such a great competition. So this way we, we could make some great leaps forward for science by having a Miss Gorilla contest and at the same time uh, yeah the gorillas would be happy we hope we don't know okay all right enough of all that let's get spiritual now Let, let's let's get serious what spiritual lesson can we learn from this apart from the apart from the fact that uh, Someone who's supposed to be spiritual, myself, seems to be talking like a blithering idiot. What can we learn from this? Well, what was that verse I said from Srimad Bhagavatam? Pungsastriya mithuni bhavametam tayaraho hridiya grantima huhu ato griha kshitra sutapta vitair janasya mohoyam ahammameti. Translation. The attraction between male and female is the basic principle of material existence. 
and allegorically it ties when when a male and female come together then they are bound together with a strong knot tying their hearts together it's called love then what happens then they have a place they want to get a place to live uh, little, their own little home or it may be in the case of gorillas some dugout space in the forest for the birds it may be a nest whatever it may be it's the same sexual attraction in human society cat society dog society mouse society and gorilla society so we need a place we need this is our own this is our own area we find that animals and birds they have very strong territorial consciousness if there's if there's one dog in the house and other dogs come he'll bark this is my house you're not allowed here so that's his that's his own place then children attraction to children and our own kind many animals are social animals birds just like crows they're they're social creatures and in human society wealth I have so much money I need more money money brings money brings prestige and so on and so on and Srimad Bhagavatam says that in this way starting from sexual attraction we have a whole psychological development of considering myself I am the husband of this woman or I am the wife of this man these are my children this is my home this is my property in this way we become entangled <coughs> in illusion thinking of terms of I me and mine although actually we have nothing to do with all of this because we're eternal spiritual living beings we're only in a particular kind of body temporarily <coughs> we go from one kind of body to another to another in human life if we <coughs> don't develop the spiritual understanding that I am an eternal living being I have nothing to do intrinsically with this body then by simply dedicating our life to fulfill our material desires we have to get another body because our desires remain unfulfilled and that body may be the body of a gorilla or a cat or a dog or a giraffe or a whale or whatever in this way there are eight million four hundred thousand species of life according to the Vedic understanding and we have to go from body to body to body to body this is called illusion by which we're entangled in material existence that's important to know that human society which doesn't rise in consciousness above the level of gorillas is only on the platform of sophisticated animals what we call high-grade civilization means it's a civilization which has developed a very sophisticated system of indulging in animalistic propensities ahara nidra bhaya maitun eating sleeping fearing defending fighting and sex any society which is developed in these we call it a high civilization but it's not a high civilization it's just sophisticated animalism and we may to insult someone call them a monkey or a gorilla 
But how much better are we than monkeys or gorillas if our whole civilization, our whole life is simply based on this pursuit of animalistic propensities? <clears throat> it's not actually c civilization. It's not, not in the real sense of the term, real civilization is meant for higher consciousness, for, for understanding that this sexual attraction binds us to material existence, which binds us to suffering. And yeah, the, the, the gorillas are doing it, sexual activities, gorillas are doing it, pigeons are doing it. The, the flies, you see, you see flies, one fly lands on the back of another fly. This is binding us in material existence. So the Vedic civilization, which this Krishna conscious movement wants to revive, is based not on how to indulge the sexual attraction, not how to find sophisticated ways of indulging our sexual attraction by holding beauty contests and having movies which show the sexual attraction in various ways. But Vedic civilization is based on the knowledge of understanding that we are all eternal living beings. We are entangled in this world due to sexual attraction. And we have to rise above that. Not that sex activity is forbidden in Vedic culture, but it's, it's regulated and controlled for the benefit of civilization so that spiritually elevated children can be born from spiritually elevated parents and generation after generation spiritual culture is uh, inculcated and imbibed. Mm. Now spiritual, when I say spiritual, uh, people have all kinds of ideas what spiritual means, but, but ultimately spiritual understanding means to understand that Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is the Supreme Enjoyer. He is the Supreme Attractive. Instead of being attracted to different body, to our own body and others' bodies. Spiritual cultivation means to revive the propensity to be attracted to Krishna's purely spiritual body. This body is made of blood, fat, bones, and so many unattractive things. Krishna's form is Satchit Ananda Vigraha, is eternally beautiful, and not composed of disgusting of disgusting things, but com but naturally, intrinsically, fully spiritual bliss. That is Krishna's form. Krishna's form does not deteriorate or die. Uh, so, the Vedic civilization, Vedic culture, is to chan to redirect our perverted attraction toward bodies, material bodies, and direct it, direct all our desires toward serving Krishna. Krishna is not a sex object in that sense, but he, he is the proper object of our love. Our love, our loving propensity, if directed toward Krishna, will purify our hearts from the lust and greed and attachment that binds us to bestial existence, birth after birth after birth. So this is uh, the teachings of the Vedic literature about how to rise above lower propensity 
to understand who we are, to come to the platform of spiritual knowledge and very practically direct our loving propensity toward Krishna so that we can overcome the lower propensities, rise to the higher propensities and be attracted to the beauty of Krishna. Krishna is far more attractive than millions and millions of beautiful women. All the, the beautiful women, everything emanates from Krishna. Krishna is the original source of all beauty at a level at which we presently can't understand. Just to give a crude example, a gorilla cannot appreciate the beauty of a human female beauty queen because his consciousness is attracted at a level that we, that we would consider very lowly. If, if a human woman looks like a gorilla woman, we would not think, well, for one thing, she wouldn't win. She, let's put it this way. We don't want to be discriminatory. But we can put it this way. She would not be very likely to win a beauty contest, a human beauty contest. So it's like that. We are at the present time attracted at a, a lower level. We need to redirect our consciousness to the higher level so that we can appreciate. We, at the present time, we don't appreciate the beauty of Krishna because our consciousness is at a low level. But when we do so, then we will be fully satisfied forever. And we won't have to take body after body after body. We will live eternally with Krishna in the spiritual world. So the process to revive that spiritual consciousness, to revive our natural elevated propensity to love Krishna, to be attracted to Krishna, whose very name means attractiveness. The process is called Bhakti Yoga, the yoga of devotion, which begins with the very simple process of purifying our tongue by chanting the holy names of Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Obviously, there's much more to be known about this. The knowledge is available. Please take advantage of it, apply it in your life, and don't live at the psychological level of a gorilla. Hare Krishna. Dante nidhaya turnakang padaya nipatya kritva chaka kushatam etadaham bravimi he sadhava sakala eva vihaya duraj chaitanya chandra charane kurutana ragaha vancha kalpa tarubhyas chakri pa sindhu bi evacha patitanam pavane bhyo vaishnavi bhyo namo namaha <laughs>